Deliana to give the presentations, 10 minute presentations and five minutes for a QA. Thank you. So this is a vision, so it's not a prediction. And uh, this is a project that uh, I was leading uh, with a famous architect, Winnie Maas, and we do it with, uh, with different institutes, Berlach Institute, Karumanegara University, Delft University. And we realized that, that when we talk about future, it would be really interesting to, to seek the possibility of, of uh, the future that only Indonesians can take care of. That's the future of kampungs. We are really part of the kampungs and every each one of you in this room as well. The satay that we eat, the, the krupuk that we eat, the woven hat that is being used by tourists, they're all made in kampungs. And we are so interrelated in such a way that it's impossible to imagine those kampungs being abandoned and um, affected for larger developments which do not bring any future to our city. Uh, so we look into the possibilities of uh, different kampungs, looking at the trends that they have. Uh, some kampungs are already specialized. Um, Rawajati has plants in it. Um, Kebun Kacang has nasi uduk in it. And there's a lot of special, special, possible specialization uh, that, that could, that could uh, happen. So, for those who has never been to Jakarta, this is for you. Um, there are a lot of uh, potentials and as well as problems in Jakarta. Um, land subsidence. Uh, statistics do not really say good things about Jakarta. Can you click on this clip, please? In two years, we cannot move. Can you click on this one, please? Click. On the other hand, there are really good uh, future predictions for Jakarta. Uh, sorry, for Indonesia. And uh, it is it truly an Asian phenomenon that urban villages are, are being attacked by blocks. So this is a, a proof of it. This is, uh, this is Shanghai. And you can see from left to right that uh, the, the, the traditional urban villages are being replaced by developments which is sometimes, it's not the development itself, but the way it is being developed. This is a, a general phenomenon these days in, in ancient cities. So we're looking at the differences of before and after the block attacks. The, the, the left slide shows the population of the, the urban villages, the right ones. When you see red, that's the attack. Seoul has plenty of it. Jakarta is not yet too much attacked. I think there is more than, than what is being shown, but we still have a hope that we are not done yet. We are not. Uh, we still have those villages. So I'm not anti-development, really. Um, actually, uh, with uh, with some really uh, interesting people in this room, we've been thinking about what would be the greenest city in the world, the most uh, social city in the world. So we are thinking about that as well. And uh, this development you see here are social housing towers, which could develop uh, depending on the need of the families. But it's just that there is something in this kampung that is so worth it to, to look into. And uh, if we could um, aim high, uh, thinking about their prosperity in, uh, in terms of how the villages can be specialized and then activated, that, that could lead to very interesting things. One example is the possibility of a shopping super kampung that would be in Poncho, 2045. Uh, the possibility of a uh, kampung in Tegal Parang, uh, who is currently producing protein in terms of tofu and tempeh, but if they would think further to uh, do algae and insects, they can have a glowing facade on their houses. Um, Penjaringan could very well be a fishery kampung. And if we envision it like this, um, development has to go step by step. This would be an aerial view of uh, Penjaringan today, and step by step, it gets actually developed by the residents living there, but without killing the identity. 
that the people will still live there and everybody gets uh, their own businesses and stay there and uh, would actually uh, prosper from those developments. So I'm an architect, so I'm also interested in good, good architecture and good urban forms that in a way development should have spatial quality and it should not just be uh, a copy of uh, those Baroque again and uh, really boring uh, Italian yeah. columns because they're, they're really not necessary. What matters are the, the spaces, that spaces can be social, can be green, and can be interesting. This, what you see, is a potential development of Kampung Rawajati, which is already green, but it could be even better. And since land is scarce, it is always possible mm -hmm. to go vertical within within limit. So I'm not saying that erase them all, make a vertical uh, farming. It's not it's not like that. But it's really that so each family could develop this, and then neighborhood, and then a part of the city. Uh, and since Kampung people are already uh, very community based, I believe that this can actually be done in the very near future. That. I remember Jane Jacobs was saying that uh, specialization kills the city, like Detroit, for example. Uh, but what I would like to propose in this kind of specialization is that diversity could still occur. And that um, even though a kampung is specialized on herbs, it does not mean that they cannot also have a, a res small resort like uh, hotels or spas or selling food because that's actually uh, what is interesting about Kampung, that all the diversity um, is there. So if this grows and if this happens, Singapore will be very jealous of Jakarta. Do you know why? Because in the 1980s they, they did not think about this, which we now are thinking about this, and they erased them all, they, they exchanged them with slabs. We love Singapore because we, we go, I don't know, we, because we don't have what they have, but they also don't have what we have. So what is, it, what is our, the future about um, the development of our city that's really in our hands right now? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I'm wondering, will that plan will be really implemented? And how about the social engagement? I mean, we already know that uh, to approach the people, Especially traditional people, it's not as easy as we think. Just to uh, change something as fast as that in several years ago. Okay. Think that things are not possible and is afraid of it, then, then things will not happen. And we have a new governor. And maybe we can expect that some decision makers are faster than the others. So 2045 is not real. It depends on uh, the, the stakeholders' engagement. You're right about the social engagement. That's true. But uh, I think if we don't first aim high to have a very high vision, we would not uh, ever get there. So yes, it is hard. And you know, you've been living here in Jakarta, right? Since you were born. I know that. I, I was all, I was born here too. And when I was 22, I left to the Netherlands. And I was so sick of Jakarta because there's really not so much things to be done or to be thought about or anything nice, but only when I became a diaspora and have an overview, I, I could look back and see what are the nice potentials that Jakarta actually um, have. So um, it is not easy, but I think this is actually not a government-based project, probably it's more a community project. And, uh, our architects, urban, uh, urbanists, and communities might might be able to to achieve more than than uh, the government. I, I remember uh, in the book of Padino, Fifi Manan was saying, "Don't trust anyone, especially the governments." Uh, and your idea, Mr. Bagapu, is vertical garden. In my last thesis, uh, I give su uh, support of my thesis in my government Surabaya. Vertical uh, garden will be applied in 2045. What should we do? How is it represented? This idea will be applied for all people in Indonesia. I think we, the thing is with this uh, idea, so there, is, there are two approaches to urban planning. One is top-down, the other one is bottom-up, really. And uh, Indonesia needs both. 
And uh, with the top-down master plan, the, the, the big problem is that it's always too big and always too, too, too confusing where to work things from. But when we start from the bottom-up uh, approach, I mean, I say we need both, though, but in terms of this proposal, it would be more bottom-up, actually. And uh, if we start from three kampungs, and then it will get multi it will be multiplied. And then as soon as there is a critical mass, then uh, that, that is when success um, can be said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.